this was something I was thinking about doing, um, looking at the photos and having takeaways, but I decided against it. But you know what? We're going to do it anyways. Was there any takeaway that you had looking at the pit or any? Yeah, just, yeah, thoughts, takeaways. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, there were, yeah, that's, um, there were definitely some guys for me that I was like, where, like, um, De Deontay Vines, I'm like, where are his pictures? Um, because I fully expect him to be uh, in the mix, um, which, by the way, guys, we will be talking about the wide receivers today because, um, you know, uh, I saw a few people make comments about the wide receivers, and I just think we need to discuss it because um, the fact is, this is, last year, we thought that the room was healthy. This year, you can make an argument that the wide receiver group is the best on the Iowa team. And I know last year we hyped it up. I know that. But if you really think about it, Dean, it's not, I don't think they necessarily underperformed last year. They had a first-year starting quarterback. They didn't have spring, and for an Iowa offense, you need that time to develop your offense. I don't really think they underperformed. Well, no, they did. They did from the preseason hype. But but still, you know, Dean, anyways, well, you know what? Let's get into it now. Well, I, no, no, no. Oh, my head's going all over the place right now. Um, yeah, for me with the pictures, Dean, let me just, let's just stay on this for a second. I love looking at the pictures, just like you. I, lo I like seeing who's taking first-team reps, um, and you always know that. You know, who if Tyler Linderbaum's in the picture, whoever he's going up against is getting first-team reps. Um, or if Spencer Petras is in there, that's a first-team rep. Um, there was one picture, Dean, where they did the huddle and spe with Spencer Petras. They took a picture of the huddle. And I was trying to see all the numbers that were in there, but I couldn't. I'm pretty sure, though, that Arlen Bruce was in there, um, which is, that's big time, Dean. I mean, um, you know, so that's big time. The other thing is um, that I've been kind of looking at, I, I, can't, I don't have any names off the top of my list, but um, yeah, there's definitely some guys that I've been like, you know, like Dallas uh, Cradith, you know, the four-star safety you know, what's going on with him? Um, he's a junior now for the Hawkeyes. What's going on with him? Not in a bad way, but, I, you know, I just kind of want to see what's going on with him. But, yeah, Dean, I'm with you. There's there's a bunch of – a lot of times there's just like where are the pictures at and things like that so that we can see how guys are doing. So anything else from the pictures, Dean? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far, but, uh, but uh, well, you know what? They're competing. They're competing. And no, there's no doubt in my mind that Padilla is throwing with the ones occasionally with a, with a, you know, with the one offensive line. Um, Dean, and this, let's just stay on this for like one minute and then let's, because we were getting into the wide receivers here. Maybe I should have just transitioned to that, but that's all right. Um, and we will come back to the wide receivers. But I listened, um, and I don't remember what the podcast is called anymore. I think it's the Big Three or something like that. Um, Big Three podcast, and it had Danny Cannell on it. And you know what? For the most part, I respect Danny Cannell. You know, I, I, I don't... You know, he doesn't get everything right, but I don't necessarily think that, you know, he's the worst, um, uh, you know, co commentator in the world. And they were talking about Iowa, which I was surprised. You know, most 
At this time of year, most people aren't talking about the Hawks ever, even if they're a top 10 team. They're never talking about the Hawks. And he brought up something that, you know, really I had only heard Paul talk about. And that is how important this transition to a new uh, strength and conditioning coach will be. And I hope, you know, I posted it on Facebook and I hope people didn't take it as me you know, advocating for Doyle or anything like that because I wasn't. I was just, all I was saying, all my comment was here, I'm just going to read it here um, because this is what uh, Cannell had to say. And they have a lot of good things to say. One guy thinks that Spencer's going to, you know, do well, that he's going to pop. Um, and another guy, all, you know, two guys said that they saw flashes, just like I said, and you have said, Dean, that we have seen flashes of Spencer. He is a prototypical he is a prototypical Iowa quarterback. But we have seen flashes just like we did with Nate Stanley of being able to make those NFL big time throws. So they made those comments which I loved. This is what I put on Facebook here. On Cover 3 Iowa Springs conversation, Danny Cannell brought up the importance of strength and conditioning in college football. He's right. Uh, strength and conditioning is massive in all programs. I remember in water polo, that, that is what made us um, able to compete with the USC's and the UCLA's who had Olympians all over the team, you know, from Czechoslovakia, from, you know, all these Eastern European uh, nations. Um, so it's big time, especially at Iowa. And he said, love or hate Chris Doyle, he developed a ton of dudes and he posed the question slash idea of whether Iowa will still be strong in the strength and conditioning area moving forward. Can they still develop guys physically at the rate they are used to? And I said, I agree. This will be important to watch. And either way, as an Iowa fan, I want Iowa to be successful here. What do you think, Dean? Yeah. Relaxed. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> Dean, you hit that uh, dead on. Um, and this is going to be the last comment here. I'll just say to this, you, everything you said was spot on. Um, listen, folks, the reality is, uh, what, you know, whether you are with the accusations or not, uh, when it comes to Doyle, he did develop a lot of guys. So that's one fact. That And he was the bread and butter of this Iowa program for a long time. The, the second fact is uh, that strength and conditioning is massive, especially for a team like Iowa. The third thing is, is that there's definitely different ways to be a leader, a.k.a. the, the new strength and conditioning coach for Iowa. J you know, Doyle's way... Or, 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 you know, let's let's use a different example. Um, let's use um, Tim Polisek. You know, the 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 abrasive yelling type in your face. That's one way to go, and it works. You know, that's what goes on in uh, training for the military. It works. It gets discipline there. And then there's, you know, uh, different. And, and by the, I mean, this is literally my degree, learning about leadership, my master's degree. Um, and then there's the way that people go about it, which is they incorporate other people who are who they are uh, teaching to have a chance to step up into leadership roles. And I like that, too. So that's a fact there. The last fact is, at the end of the day, Dean, the results will show how successful or not it is. Right. And that's all there is to it.
plain and simple. I mean, that's it. We, the results will show. You know, the, 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 really, he. It's strength and conditioning is a results driven program. You know, that's it. So you know, so we will see. But yes, folks, it is important. Dean, you hit it nail on. Um, uh, I loved it. All right. Next thing, folks, by the way, while I'm pulling this up, go to 247hawkeye.com. All right, preseason rankings, the way too early rankings, all right? Um, yeah, Dean, you know, what I was saying before, you know, the preseason rankings are not perfect. A lot of times they're actually more accurate than people want to give them credit for, I, you know, I believe. Um, and, and by the way, I believe we only had... Uh, this past year, there were only rankings in the third week. I think that's when they started the rankings. Um, and so let's just take a look at that. Um, I, well, obviously, Iowa was not in that. I want to go to 2019, actually, where there was actually, you know, an, a week zero. Let's go to 2019. And, folks, Iowa, I, I'll preface this with Iowa is ranked across the board. And, by the way, Iowa finished – ranked 15th for a or was it a second straight year that they were ranked 15th or a uh, second straight year that they were top 15 dean right right okay all right in 2019 folks here uh were the top 10 and then i'll pull up the um the finishing top uh, top 10 and then also where iowa is at in 2009, it was Clemson, 1, Alabama, 2, Georgia, 3, Oklahoma, 4, Ohio State, 5, LSU, 6, Michigan, 7, Florida, 8, Notre Dame, 9, Texas, 10, and Iowa was ranked 20th. All right. The final rankings, as it pulls up here, LSU, 1, Clemson, 2, Ohio State, 3, Georgia, 4. So really, Dean, the top five, pretty solid, pretty correct. I mean, LSU got first, but, you know, if you're a top five team, all five teams have the ability to be the top team. Um, Oregon fifth, Florida six, Oklahoma seven, Alabama eight. That's pro that was probably a surprise. Penn State nine, Minnesota ten, Wisconsin eleven, and then Iowa finished fifteenth. Uh, so that's two years in a row. Iowa has finished top fifteen, which is big time, Dean. That's big time. I mean, let's not let's not. You know, let's put it, it plain and simple. That's big time. Um, all right, let's look at some of the way too early rankings and where I was at. And I'm going to read what they say. And then, uh, Dean, you know, let's react here. First, actually, you know what, Dean? Let's do this. Where do you think Iowa should be ranked? Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. I, I, looking at this, I do not see how uh, people can put Wisconsin in front of Iowa considering Iowa beat them down last year, which, by the way, folks, is very important because you cannot put you cannot put a price on how important it is for a class of guys to know that they have the capability of beating a certain team because they beat that team. You know, the thing with Nate Stanley in Iowa was that they hadn't done it. And so when they didn't do it, it became harder and harder. It's kind of where Iowa State's at. And it's kind of, and by the way, we're going to also say where Iowa State is ranked in all of these as well. Um, and, it, you know, and that's why Nebraska, I don't think Nebraska is going to have an easy time beating Iowa because None of the class of guys have done it, and it's hard to actually have that belief you can do it, that kind of swagger to do it. All right. Athlon Sports has Iowa ranked 14th, and this is what they say. And, by, and here's my answer to the question I asked Dean. I think Iowa should be top 15, period. Um, but I would probably rank them 13th. With Matt Hankins coming back, with the secondary in place, if you know Iowa football, you know that the top positions are the O-line, the defensive line, and just the defense in general. And Iowa, on top of that, number one, the offensive line wasn't even as good as they could have been last year, which the podcast 
uh, that I mentioned with Danny Cannell actually stated with stats yesterday, and I wasn't aware of it. Dean, did you know that Tyler Goodson was hit at the line of scrimmage 62% of the time? Did you know that? Amen. Absolutely right. Um, so the offensive line wasn't even as good as they should have been last year. And Iowa still ran the football better than they have ran, uh, you know, under Tim Polasek and Derek Foster and Brian Ferentz. Um, but the, the positions for Iowa that are the most important, again, offensive line, defensive line, and just the defense in general. And then running back. I've always said, as long as Iowa has a good running back, they will be a top 25 team, and they will have a chance to to make it to the Big Ten Championship. Check, check, and check. I know the defensive line is is young, but we've seen uh, Kelvin Bell and, and Reese Morgan before him, and also Jay Neiman's on there, developed, and they get those guys going, which is what that podcast said. Uh, yeah, uh, that I listened to yesterday, that they retool and they're all good. So Iowa checks all those boxes. And they actually upgraded with talent like Keegan Johnson, Arlen Bruce. Um, they upgraded with their running backs getting a year older. They upgraded in the secondary. They are a veteran secondary with multiple guys who will be ready for the NFL next year. All right. 14th, Iowa. The Hawkeyes last, uh, lost their first two games and finished the 22 season by winning six in a row. Let's just say, let's, um, yes, let's read the whole thing. Um, the Big Ten West Division title should be, be within reach for um, Kirk Ferentz. Quarterback Spencer Petrus needs to improve after an uneven debut. 1,569 yards and nine touchdowns. I actually don't think that's that uneven. I mean, he had nine touchdowns to five interceptions in eight games. Not bad. Not great, but not bad, especially for a first-year guy. And there's some retooling needed up front after tackle Larry Jackson and guard Cole Banwart departed to the NFL. By the way, I think Cole Banwart is a very under-the-radar guy, considering how many starts he had for Iowa. However, a good foundation remains up front with center Tyler Linderbaum at the pivot, allowing the offense to continue to lean on running back Tyler Goodson. Tight end Sam Laporta and receivers Nico Raggiani, a.k.a. Nico Regani, and Tyrone Tracy are back. But the passing game will miss Amir Smith-Marset and Brandon Smith. Iowa's defense held teams to 16 points a game and 4.3 yards per play in 2020. All right. And obviously, Iowa lost Chauncey Golson and Davion Nixon and Jack Heflin, but they kept Zach Van Volkenberg, second team all Big Ten. What do you think on that, Dean? Oh, and let me say where Iowa State's at in this. Uh, uh, Wisconsin is 11th. <laughs> Shocker. Um, and uh, Iowa State is 6th. All right, Dean, what are your thoughts? Solid. Yeah. Right. And then also, Dean, real quick, this is the most highly recruited group of defensive linemen collectively and as a team that Iowa has had in a long time, which is a which is a nice discussion separately, but yeah, that's the case too right now. I don't get it either. Me too, partner. There's, but as I said 
after what what did I say after that? There's no film. Once there's film, he's in trouble, and he was in trouble. Go ahead, Dean. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, these are the FPI rankings, the football power index. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> right, yeah. But here's the thing about super seniors. Okay, by the way, Matt Hankins is not a super senior. You know, he played for four years, uh, but, you know, a lot of Iowa guys get that red shirt year. That's the program having a red shirt. And this is basic. Last year was basically Matt Hankins' red shirt year. Dean is referring to the football power index, which, by the way, folks, Iowa comes in at 23rd. Um, and Iowa State is fourth in that. Um, and I got to say, I'm shocked by it as well. I mean, I look at it and I look at how many guys Iowa has coming back, plus the upgrade and recruiting that they've had. And it, I don't get it either. All right, let's, um, but yeah, that is the power index. And then Wisconsin in the football power index is 15th, which that's the one I do not understand. Literally, they had a losing record last year. What will be so much better this year that makes them be a top 15 team? I get it. I, I, I get it. They have been good for years. But you can't, when you're judging whether a team can be good this year, the only thing that you can realistically look at, and even then you can't really look at it that much because it all it doesn't always equal success, a.k.a. the 2016 Iowa team. You know, look, when people looked at the 2015 team and looked to the 2016 Iowa team. But the only thing you can look back at is the previous year's team and their success and who they have coming back. And Wisconsin's previous team simply was not that good. You cannot look at years past and say, okay, this is where they should be. Because if, if people did that for Iowa, then Iowa would be a top 15 or at top 25 at the very least every year. And as we know, they are not. Well, lately they have been. But, um, you know, in the, in the early 2010s, they were not. But, um, yeah, Dean, I'm with you there. All right, let's move on to, to other ones. Okay, so that's Athlon. Here's ESPN's, uh, not football power index, but just their um, normal thing. All right. They have um, Iowa at, let's see here. Uh, they have Iowa State at eight, and I think that's more correct. I think Iowa State is more from the eight to 12 range. I think that's where they should be. Um, and then I'm going to also bring up another point here in a second. Iowa comes in at 12th, and this is what the outlook says. And I'm not, I'm not going to read all the outlooks here, but uh, I like this one. Um, I'll read one more outlook, actually. Um, Iowa's season was delayed and then cut short when its regular season finale against Michigan and bowl game against Missouri were canceled. That sucked, by the way. That sucked. The Hawkeyes, especially against Missouri, that sucked. The Hawkeyes still showed... Promise in finishing the season with a six-game winning streak. Exactly. They won six straight. They won six straight. They have, if, there's only two teams in the Big Ten that have this type of momentum. Maybe, may, you could argue a third. Ohio State and Iowa. Those are the only two teams in the Big Ten that have this type of 
momentum, and you could argue Northwestern since they went to the the you know they went to the Big Ten title game. Um, and so yeah, um, and then they say um, the Hawkeyes still showed whatever. Tyler Goodson was one of the top tailbacks in the Big Ten, and he'll carry more of a load um, since Makai Sargent is gone. Quarterback Spencer Peaches threw eight touchdowns in his final six games. That was big time. Um, the offensive line got a boost when center Tyler Lindebob opted to come back. Uh, the defensive line will have to be re- rebuilt, but end Zach Van Volkensburg return was good news. The secondary will return intact if cornerback Matt Hankins doesn't turn pro, and, and he didn't. I think this is a good assessment, Dean. I think that was a good assessment. Um, let's look at where Wisconsin is real quick. Um, so Iowa State was 8th, Iowa 12th, uh, Wisconsin 17. I don't even think Wisconsin should be ranked, honestly. And if they should, I think it sh- is maybe like 23rd. Um, so, yeah, um, let's move forward one more. And then, so we're going to, Dean, let's just roll final reaction. This is 247 Sports. Um, they have Iowa State at 7th, um, and they have Iowa, let's see here, they have Wisconsin at 13, and they have Iowa at 15, all right? Um, this is NCAA.com, their way too early rankings. They have Iowa State at 5, they have Iowa at 10, which I have seen Iowa at 10 twice now. And they have Wisconsin at 14. Last uh, but not least, well, no, that's it. We've gone through quite a bit there. All right, Dean, your th- I'll give you my thoughts here, and then let's back it, bounce it to you, okay? These expectations for Iowa are 100% warranted. Iowa has finished top 15 two years running. They have finished ranked three years running. Iowa is a top three to four program in the Big Ten right now. They are a top 18 program in the entire country right now. And you could argue over five years they're a top 15 program. The recruiting has never been better. As a whole, you know, and I said this in previous podcasts, The one thing that the big, you know, because the Big Ten tour bus always goes to one practice. The one, and they may even go to this open practice. We'll see. But they, one thing they always say is the top end talent for Iowa is really good, but the lower end is not as good as other teams. Now, that's not as much the case because Iowa has recruited in the top 35 for the past three, four years running. And there's a lot of talent in Iowa City right now from top to bottom and with the and with guys coming in as um as walk-ons Charlie Jones uh we're seeing the other walk-on who came from like Ball State the wide receiver I'm blanking on his name right now um but um what is his name uh, anyways Iowa is solid they return veterans like Matt Hankins Dane Belton Riley Moss folks their defense is so stout coming into this season. It's ridiculous. I know for the past two years, I have said this will be potentially the best defense. I don't think that this Iowa team, I can say that. I don't think I can say that this year, but I think it's close. You can make an argument that this team has the potential to be one of the best defenses Iowa's had. And by the way, when I said that last year about the Iowa Hawkeyes, I was somewhat proven correct. As they were a top defense in the country. Now, were they one of the best Iowa defenses? Nah, well, I don't know. Spencer Petras showed strong promise at the end of the year. Tyler Goodson is the workhorse that Iowa needs. And Iowa has an NFL tight end in um, Sam Laporta. I'm, ex- I'm super excited to see Luke Lachey, a.k.a. Luke Lackey. And maybe even Josiah Neiman. I saw pictures of him in the in the thing. I like you know I said this to you Dean, I think that the second spot for the tight end spot will it it may be kind of a rotational thing. 
I don't think we're always going to see it being Sam Laporta and Luke Lachey. It will definitely be Sam Laporta. But we have an NFL tight end in Sam Laporta. And then the wide receiver group, which me and Dean will talk about here in a second, is as all-around solid as it has been. It is so healthy right now, Dean. The wide receiver group is so healthy right now. The position group is so healthy. In my eyes, Iowa should be ranked 13th or 12th. I think 10 is just fine. I'm okay with that. So that's my take. Go ahead, Dean. Back up, baby. Oh, my God. Ah! He will. He will. Ooh, that, the, tre the the trespassing is not good, folks. That's not good. That's not. Dean, we're going to have to talk about this now. Plain and simple. We're going to have to talk about this. And that was bad. But this is worse. Right, which, which, by the way, this is going to lead into no offense and what I'm going to say with no offense as well. Not that he did a criminal thing, but this is not good, folks. I'm positive he'll stay at Iowa. He'll have a punishment. He'll be suspended two, three, four games, probably four games. Um, I'm a little bit nervous. Trespassing, folks, that's a, that's a legit charge, Okay. Trespassing can be a felony charge. Um, I wouldn't be shocked in the least if this became political. Flat out, I'll say that right now. If it does, that will break my heart because the the real and actually with the Mir Smith Marset, I was kind of surprised it didn't happen then. But the reality is, is that that is the climate we're living in right now, and. I just hope that people can look at this in the correct way, which is he did make a mistake. He made a mistake. He committed, he, he did do something wrong. He did something wrong. And the correct response from us should be support in him taking responsibility as a man as a young man, taking responsibility and moving forward accordingly. That's the biggest thing, taking responsibility. Not looking for a scapegoat, responsibility. Now, if we go back, Dean, Tristan Wirfs, um, I think it was uh, um, Brady Reef. I believe it was also Cedric Lattimore. Was it Cedric Lattimore or was it Chauncey Golson? I think one, those two also, one of those two also got in trouble. But definitely Brady Reef, Tristan Wirfs, Amir Smith Marset, and now Josiah Meeman. I, I hadn't even seen that. All of those guys have gone, been okay. They've been okay. So I have confidence that this will be okay. I hope that this doesn't get politicized, and I hope that that this is taken care of internally with support. And because Josiah Meeman Dean is very, very, very smart. If you look at his offer list, I mean, the dude had offers from some of the top institutions in America. He made a mistake. Responsibility needs to be taken, and he needs to take it on the chin like a man and move forward. What do you think, Dean? Yeah.
Yeah. I don't want him to leave either. He's talented. He's a good kid. Right. Right. Correct. Right, right. Great point. Great point. And, and by the way, Dean, the best thing for Josiah Meeman would be, and yes, we are saying take it like a man, because he is a man, and he needs to, and, and men, and fellow men know this, when you make a mistake, you take responsibility. Plain and simple. And you and you try to get better from it. Um, the best thing for Josiah Meeman is to stay at Iowa because there's the you know there's the psycho uh, psychological principle of you have issues in one place and you think that if you leave that one place that all those issues will leave. Um, and when you go to a new place, it'll be better. No, those the issue was you. And so Josiah Meeman needs to stay in Iowa City, figure out how to be better himself as a person, and move forward that way, plain and simple. The best thing to do is to stay with a program that already has your back and to take those resources and do well with them. All right, let's leave it there. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's too bad. Too bad. But, uh, yeah, let's leave it there. Um, I think we said what we needed to say, and I think we're on point, Dean, quite frankly. I mean, I really do. All right. Uh, by the way, folks, um, weird spot to say this, but, uh, you know, go to 247hawkeye.com. Uh, we will be um, um, we will be making a YouTube channel, putting the, the video on there. Um, and uh, the best place to follow us is Facebook, uh, Nolan Hawkeye Anthony and Dean Freen. Um, and smash that follow button on Twitter and Parlor at 247Hawkeye and Instagram at official247Hawkeye.com page. And I will start to do better on Instagram, I promise. <laughs> Even though Dean's better at it than I am. He's better on Instagram. Um, Dean, okay, I, this is, I just want to talk about... Um, you did... Um, You you had some um, blowback, and I'm, I'm uh, on um, an article that was written, <laughs> um, and you uh, is it okay if I pull up the response that you had, Dean? All right. Um, and listen, folks, I I'm gonna say this right off the bat, and I've said this many times. The only place that that has Editors is Hawk Central. They are a newspaper, okay? Every other place has do, or does not have that and makes mistakes. In, in 247 Sports, the, the, the uh, Hawkeye Insider makes mistakes all the time. Rivals makes mistakes in their articles all the time. Every place does, and I don't want to give their name clout because this is 247hawkeye.com, baby. Um, but they make mistakes. We don't have editors. But our the when we write, we're writing about an idea, and the ideas are usually better, and that's, that's the whole reason we write them. And 99% of people understand the idea of what we're writing about, and they love it. They love it. That's why, and you know what? People commenting on the mistakes, I love it because that just shows that we're growing a ton. Um, and you know, there we're getting, you know, we're getting into haters' minds, and the people who love us still love us. Um, I can't find your response, Dean. I'm ch I'm trying to find. Yeah, yeah. Preface it, baby.
Right. Right. It's a hobby. Now, now, real quick. It is a hobby, but we do take it seriously, though. I just want to preface it with that. Yeah, go ahead, Dean. Yes. We'll fix it. Yeah, no problem. Right. Right. And also, we're so excited about getting the idea and content out there that we just get it out there, you know? But yeah, you're right, Dean. Yeah. Right. Correct, because we don't have three, four people like Hawk Central does. I, I shouldn't even be saying their name, honestly. Yes, yes. <laughs> 